coming back today. So for those who wish, we've got some black armbands to wear, if you want to show that respect. Let's be clear, we're anti-war, but pro-soldier. We don't want to see these boys killed. The best thing that we could be doing for them, the best thing is to bring them home. Immediate and unconditional withdrawal. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Um, I suppose the first thing is to say, well, who, who is Stand Fast? Some of you may not know who we are. Um, we're a group of uh, veterans and former service people um, that opposed the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, we see a lot of similarities in the um, in the reason, the real reasons. Um, the troops have been sent to these countries um, and we also see a lot of similarities in the lies that have been used for, for the justifications for both these wars. Um, part of the reason for Stand Fast being formed um, was to help destroy the myth um, that if you, if you oppose the war um, you're against the individual soldiers involved. Um, the government is very good um, at using the, the previous sacrifice of soldiers for their own ends um, and to make it this, this almost sort of holy of holies that, that you can't touch. You know, if you speak out against the war then, then, uh, then you're directly attacking the people in there and that's I wanted to talk briefly about what I like to call the sudden feminists who defend the, the war on Afghanistan. The likes, when the, the war started, the likes of George Bush and John Howard were suddenly on the side of the women of Afghanistan and saying that this war and this occupation was all about the rights of the women. It was echoed throughout the media and it's, it's still repeated today in the justifications for the ongoing brutal occupation. And it's an absolute disgrace and it's something that genuine feminists, people who really stand by women in Afghanistan and throughout the world, have no part of and want no part of. I'd just like to sing a song from the early 1600s. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, hurrah. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, hurroo, hurroo. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, the enemy nearly slew ya. Johnny dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. Where are the legs that used to run, hurroo, hurroo. Where are the legs that used to run? Hurroo, hurroo. Where are the legs that used to run? Indeed, your dancing days are done. Johnny, dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew you. With your guns and drums and drums and guns, hurroo. Hurroo, with your drums and guns and guns and drums. Hurroo, hurroo, with your drums and guns and guns and drums. The enemy nearly slew ya. Johnny dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. I belong to a Japanese labor union. Uh, I teach in Japan I, until four months ago, and um, w over there the anti-war movement is also growing. 
uh, my union uh, was six months on. We started protesting six months before the 2003 war began, when other unions uh, also around the world were doing this. But uh, in Japan, uh, we were out there in October. The war began in March. And, and I, say, I, say, I say this because I'm an ex, besides being a, a university teacher, I'm an ex-journo. And I have two degrees in Middle Eastern history. In the States, they won't let you teach about Palestine. They'll fire you. If you're a journo, they won't let you talk about it. All you have to do is look at Helen Thomas, who worked for UPI for 40 years, and opened her mouth about Palestine and was fired. One of the best women journalists for 40, 90 year old woman fired because, because she spoke her mind about Palestine. So, um, as for myself, I'm actually a, vi a veteran of the Vietnam War, but in a different sense, in that um, I was one of um, uh, a number of young men who were up for the uh, uh, national service or NASHO as they used to call it and uh, I remember I was a student at university uh, in 1971 and uh, someone in my tutorial group said uh, who's going to the Vietnam moratorium march um, and I was the only person who said yes I'll, I'll be going I'd um, like to sort of to uh, sort of emphasise what I think Dave said about um, the uh, uh, fact that the war in Afghanistan and the fact uh, and the war in Iraq are just the um, you know the latest stages in the war. That there is uh, a war machine which is pushing on into Central Asia. It came about with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the belief by the Americans that they could now push into Southwest Asia. And uh, as a consequence of that, we've seen the Iraq war, we've seen the Afghanistan war, we've seen Pakistan destabilized. They're moving against Iran, and the war is gonna be, you know, go into the stands, it's gonna go into Kyrgyzstan, etc. As the Americans push their power into Central Asia, this is being done for the usual imperialist measures of trying to get resources for the war machine. For the war machine, the most important resource is oil, and 60% of the oil, or some huge quantity of oil, is in the area that the, uh, that the, American, the American Empire is expanding into.